and welcome to episode 49 of the Wet Shavers Roundtable. This is Douglas Smythe from phoenixartisanaccoutrements.com, and with him today I have... The one and only. There you go, baby. That's right, That's I am right. here on the road. In his, in his, in his baby seat. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually, uh, yeah, I'm in, I'm in the, the, the high chair right now. Yeah, he's in the high chair. Uh, David is on the road, but he's, he's heading home, so he'll be he'll be joining us from the car as well as from his house once he figures it out. But today yeah, we'll be about, is... about ten minutes out from the house, so it shouldn't be soon. It's been a busy day. It's been a busy day, yeah, but it's no all doubt. good. No doubt, we're running a little bit late, and this is going to be such a great show, um, only because it's a celebration of our good friend Rob Frank's life, who uh, just recently passed away last week, and it's kind of torn uh, us all up. I know I'm uh, I've been down all week, and I still am. But today we, we, we joined together to uh, celebrate Rob's life and really uh, share stories, some of our best Rob stories. Uh, we have two seats open. Uh, the show will be hosted primarily by just David and I. So just lighting a candle for Rob. He's here with us, guys. There we go. And, and, okay. and if I may, Doug, just uh, if I could get a little uh, little time just to speak on, uh, on, for, on for Frank. And um, he's just a genuine guy, man. Anybody that dealt with him, Anybody that's seen his videos, anybody that's seen his posts, um, he wasn't a character. Who, who he was, was a, was a genuine person. There wasn't an act. He didn't play up for the camera. He didn't, um, he didn't change who he was based on his audience. He was who he wanted to be at all times. And um, somebody that does videos in my style, so I really appreciate him um, just being his own man. He, he didn't conform to what. Um, anybody did. He didn't do his videos like me. He didn't do his videos like uh, Christopher David Bailey. He did what the, what the hell he wanted to do. And he would curse and he would um, he sound moody. And he didn't give a shit. That, shit, that was him. And um, somebody that just delivers raw personality as who they are. I really appreciate uh, who he was. And it was just it was yeah. special. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, one way to easily point that out, how, how different he was and how he didn't really care and was his own own beast was simply he was born in new york yet the guy <laughs> was a huge red sox fan <laughs> yeah and he wasn't shy with that hat or his red sox pair for new year either and i just it, you know it, like that's who he was you know it's just, it, talk about going against the green he really this guy was going against the green this guy you know he'd been there so many times for me um i noticed a post peter put up earlier where you know Rob would PM him if he saw Peter post something and, you know, just being there for him. And same thing with me. The guy would pop in and out, PM me here and there if he saw I was going through some some stuff or just saw some stuff. Uh, he was always there. And he always gave me a pep talk. And just like, I mean, you know, it just, it's just it's tough to really put it into words. Um, the reason why I'm late for today's show is I was running around really fast. Uh, I hadn't had a chance to read his obituary entirely. Um, so I missed out on some, some of the stuff. And one of the things that I did miss out on was a college fund that's been put together for his son, August. And, um, there was a link there and the link was really long and lengthy and just funky. So if I said it to you right now, it probably caused major confusion and you wouldn't remember it. So I created my own domain for it. And, um, I, I call it August college fund dot X, Y, Z. So that's how you get there folks. If you'd like to contribute to, uh, Rob's son's college fund he won't be going to school till 2023 so we have plenty of time to uh, to donate to that and again it's august college fund dot xyz please uh if you're online right now put that in the, the in, on your facebook page or, or share on social well, media but just a quick question when the hell did xyz become an acceptable dot something or other when the hell did that happen there's a lot of them it's, it's been going on for a while but um yes so dot xyz not dot com because i figure it's like you know it's August College Fund and XYZ. So please contribute. Um, so that said, I think, I mean, is there anything else you want to bring up? Any other stories you want to tell? Any uh, favorite videos you have, David? Um, just something with me that, I, again, just like he did with you, uh, he would message me when he'd see me get attacked with some drama. You know, there was a lot of heavy drama towards the beginning of my time on the Facebook groups with, um, you know, a lot of the, the English members of the Big Shave. And he, oh, he just, yeah. He, you know, he just showed his support, and just funny enough, this past week I found myself listening to a voice message he sent me through uh, through Facebook Messenger, and it, it and it wasn't anything relevant. He was just sending me a voice message that he wanted to be, be put on the list for the shave the man brush. Yeah. And I listened and I listened to it like three times this week. Just I don't know. I have no particular reason why I did it or why I should have did it, but 
I just know I knew it was there, and just I, I've been able to hear his voice. So it's kind of cool just to, to, to know that I have his voice, even though it's not saying anything profound, but it, it is a message <laughs> to me. So it's just it, it's pretty cool. Well, it's funny how the irrelevant things suddenly become profound, profound things when the situation changes. Nolan Kimber was sharing a similar story where he also has a voicemail from um, from Rob on either on his phone or in his Facebook chat. But yeah, he says he listens to it. I'm, I'm pretty sure that was Nolan, unless I'm screwing it up. Nolan, if you're watching and I screwed it up, I'm sorry, but I'm pretty sure it was you who told me that story. Um, but, you know, enough about us. Let's get some guys on here. Who wants to share a, share a Rob story? We got two seats open. Uh, we could take you both at a time. So who do we got? Hey, just to answer Zach like to Shay's question. Yes, Rob did have a YouTube channel. It was like a weird name, Wat, Wat, Watson, or is it Watson or what, what is it? Watson it Watson. Or... Yeah, let me check that out real quick. Yeah, I'm sure somebody, yeah, there's probably a link already posted. Yeah, it was it was always weird. I, I always meant to ask him what the hell that meant. But yeah, it was, it's like Watson or Watson one or. You know, you just can't, you can't YouTube him anymore. Everyone's done a shave for him. That's well, someone out there, yeah, has it. I... please share it. I'll put it. I'll, when I edit the show after the fact, I'll, I'll post it right here. Yeah. I think, I think Ronnie Greer, <laughs> uh, Ronnie, Ronnie uh, Greer, Greer. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, What's uh, the name of his channel? Ron Greer? Is it, is it Wana, Wana, Wana Ta? <laughs> well, Thompson. Well, Thompson won. Okay, great. Thank you, guys. Okay, so we have a seat open. Who wants to share their favorite Robert Robert Frank memory? <laughs> what do you want to do? AJ. What do you want to eat? I'm down the street. So I'm like, well, on the street, what do you want to eat? By the way, I believe his funeral was today, too. Yeah. So uh, obviously, uh, we can't there. If anybody get, get, give a chance, if anybody that has a chance, um, also send a message to Peter Tracali. So, for um, I don't Peter's know what a, his relationship was with Rob Frank was, but Peter really was taking his um, the whole struggles with him really hard. And um, he, you know, Peter being he, such a good friend of mine, I know he was taking what? really, really hard. So, yeah. anybody give some well wishes not only to Rob Frank's family but huh? um, to Peter Tracali too. I again, I I don't know the ins and outs of him and Rob Frank's relationship. But he's getting really bad. Okay, so there we go. We got G with us. Okay. And we got Ronnie. So uh, welcome, guys. Thank you for joining us today. Hey, uh, it's, it's, I really am excited. I'm sad. I'm all those things and more. Uh, <laughs> but that said, what do we got, Jeeves? We'll do this in the order of appearance. So what's your story? All right. All right. One. When I was a young soap maker back in the day, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Rob Franks was actually one of my first paying customers. And I was like, sir, sir, just just take it and try it and let me know what you want. And he's like, no, no, no. I've, I've got to pay for my product. And I was like, okay, okay. And so he, he took it. He was one of my, my first customers. He really gave me a, a little oomph behind a, you know, gave me some steam to keep going through. He was a great guy. Uh, I know he was originally, I want to say, from St. Louis, and he was a Rams fan. So uh, he was always giving me shit about the Chiefs. And uh, I, you know, I, I could be wrong about being from St. Louis, but uh, his father, some, someone, yeah. he, he was a Rams fan. And uh, okay. it broke my heart, you know, kind of when – I turned on my my news feed and I saw that he had passed. I was uh I was actually talking with him the day before, kind of on a Matthew Weaver did a live broadcast and did a shave of the day, and Rob was watching. He had his uh I want to say his wife was there showing in the broadcast, and we were you know all chatting in the in the comments there, kind of and. Uh, I was asking, I was like, you know, how's he doing? It, it sounds like he's not doing too well. Um, you know, he's been in there for a few weeks. I was like, his fundraiser wasn't really getting very much steam there. You know, we, we kind of, uh, I guess we're not doing too bad right now. But uh, 
after the fact, you know. So, uh, I think he was a great guy and an asset to the community. And really, that's all I wanted to say. I don't have headphones right now on me. Um, there's actually a local barbecue fest in town. But I just wanted to hop on <laughs> and, uh, you know, put in my, my little story. So, yeah, 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 we got you. I think, I don't know, Douglas, I think he's frozen. He, he's not moving at all right now. So, I don't know what happened there. Did you and guys Rob, hear that? Rob, it, it absolutely breaks my heart that Rob was a St. Louis fan. Uh, being a Raider fan, and now that the L.A. Rams are here, it, it's extremely disappointing. It's extremely disappointing. But, no, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the, I guess the Rams are over there, so, hey, you can take them. Hey, well, hey, thank you so much, Brian, for sharing your story with that. Ronnie, what do you have for Ronnie? Well, um, can. I, can you guys hear me first of all? Am, am I on? Or? Okay, good. All right. Um, you know, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I got you, Douglas. Yes, yes. So I, I um, you know, I don't have a whole lot. Um, Brian had a real good story. I actually, um, I don't know exactly how I crossed paths with Rob, you know, in the groups, but um, we shared a common uh, interest in that he became a school bus driver late in life after being a stay-at-home dad for many years. He had a great love of animals, and I love animals. And I guess he was a vet tech for a decade. So anytime I posted animal pictures, he was right there liking and commenting, and um, it, it was just really good. So there was an initial, you know, an attraction there between us in that way. And then um, when he was going to get his license when he was training, I, I was actually training drivers um, at Greyhound for 10 years, and we trained a lot of people who had never driven a large vehicle before. So I was trying to give Rob tips and stuff. And I was trying to get together with him on the phone and prep him for his road test, but he was just too busy. And then by the time we got together, um, he had passed his test. So that went really well. But what, what I wanted to say was, you know, for a guy that hadn't driven um, anything large before, um, he really impressed me in terms of his dedication to safety. Um, and he just embraced everything. You know, when, when you train people and you tell them this is what you need to do and this is why, whether you're driving a big vehicle or any vehicle, you know, a lot of people have really bad uh, habits and bad attitudes towards driving. And, and Rob just embraced everything about defensive driving um, as it was presented to him. And uh, and I say that because then, Douglas, yeah. you had post, you had tagged me in the video that he posted about school bus drivers. And I watched that video, and it's fantastic. Um, I drive, I drive um, on my route on local roads uh, five days a week, and I'm in a busy school district. So I'm dealing with a caravan of school buses dropping off in the morning, yep. And picking up in the afternoon and it's just it's you know it's a pain to me but all the stuff that rob said really hit home and he was great about it. he says listen <laughs> i'm not doing it it's not safe yeah he laid the that's it down. and everything that he said was right everything that he said was right on though you know plus he comes in hey yeah. rob frank guys effing you know i i just i want to do that in my videos but i can't it's not fair so you know but the but the video was just great uh, and Rob's actually in a group that we have for drivers for a while. I'm not sure if he's still there, but I posted that video in there and I said, hey, guys, you need to look at this because we talk about school buses and stuff. So, you know, between his love for animals and, and us sharing that and just, you know, always being such a positive guy. And he, the, the UK guys just loved him to death, you know. Uh, and, and like when I got up, the I, I don't know if it was Monday or Tuesday, when I get up in the morning at like 3.30 to get on the exercise machine and I just pull out my iPad to open up the app for the machine, I used that as a display, and I saw that thing, and my heart just sunk. And I was crying, you know. And, I mean, I, and I posted a video in, in Chevette World. My wife doesn't get it, um, you know. But I, I mean, even now, I'm starting to cry. Now it's just, it's, yeah. I don't even know what to say, you know. I look at his picture, and I see his a guy that was full of life, that was young, that had so many people that he touched, but so many more people that he was going to touch that he hadn't met yet, you know. Um, and like David said, you know, he's a straight shooter. He doesn't sugarcoat it. He doesn't, you know, make it work for you. He tells you how it is. And like you said, Douglas, you know, I hate to bring it up, but, you know, you said that he said, who cares what the hell you do with yourself? It's, it's your life. You know how you can Fran run your business, how you and Fran do things at home. It's nobody's damn business. You know, yeah. they buy your soap or they don't. They yeah. can shut the hell up and they can move on. <laughs> That's how my wife talks, you know, but but it's great. You know, I, I, I just love it. So, you know, I, I don't want to take up too much time, but that, that video, Douglas, I really enjoyed that. And I sent you a link to the, uh, and I sent you a link to the video that he made for his son, August, 
Um, yes, I don't know if you've seen it. It's about two minutes yeah. long. It's just fantastic. It's fantastic. So, you know, you, you can you can cut that in any way you want it. it. To share that thing with people, I watch it. The way that David listens to that voice message, I watch that yeah. video and I'm back with Rob again. And I can't get it enough to, <laughs> for you, August. And it's, it, it's, it's it great. So, Thank you, Ron. You know, and it's funny because Fran, uh, when she was in college, she was a, a bus driver as well. That's how she paid for school. And so she could completely relate to it as well. She was, you know, just laughing. And, and but also like, it's, he's so right. <laughs> you know, so she could really relate and really get a lot out of it. Um, and like, you know, yeah. Uh, and and one, one last thing, I'm, I'm sorry, Douglas, before I forget, some of the things that he said in that video, you know, I've been driving for 25 years of uh, buses. And some of the things he said in that video, I keep them in mind when I drive now. You know, you get a little lax, you get in a hurry. And, and he talks about the railroad crossing and I go through 10 of them a day, 10 of them a day. And I have to yeah. do the same procedure that he does. You know, you have to stop. You're supposed to turn off the blowers. You're supposed to open the window and the door so you can yeah. look and listen for a train. I don't always turn off the blowers at some time they're on high, but now I'm starting to think about what Rob said uh, and I'm doing it, you know, cause he's right. Yeah, good. So, Thank there you, you Ronnie. Go. Thank you, Ronnie, for joining us. That's great. Thank you. Um, you know, and let's, uh, let's check out that video right now. Hey everybody, it's Rob Frank, Effin, your friend. Some of you are really pissing me off. Well, I'm going to tell you why. Um, this is a video on school bus etiquette and safety. Why is that? Well, because I was passed twice today while I was stopped. Picking up or I think I was picking up one time and then dropping off a passenger. So let me give you a little idea, a refresher of the rules when it comes to school buses, at least here in the state of New York. I don't know what your municipality is like, but let me tell you something, okay? Number one, we do not make rights unread. I don't care how much you're gonna sit back there and honk at me, I'm not gonna make a right unread because we don't make rights unread in the state of New York. So if I'm at a red light and I have my right hand turn signal on and you're honking the horn behind me, I'm not gonna move. That's just the way that it is. Number two, you know why I keep 15, 20 feet in front of my bus? I'll tell you why, you ready? You break down, I don't back up. I don't like to back up. Worst thing for a bus driver to do is to back up. Do we like backing up, John? No, no, we certainly don't. So that's why I leave that room. So if you can't squeeze past me on the right because the rare road hasn't flared open enough, I'm not moving up. Because if the guy in front of me breaks down, I need that room to pass them, okay? Number two, the flashing lights on the body of the vehicle, you know, below the top, are called the hazards. I put them on because I see something that may be hazardous. So I put them on. That's my way of communicating to you that there's something going on ahead of us that I don't like. And I'll put them on whenever I damn well want to, and I'll make sure that I don't get hurt, my monitor doesn't get hurt, and for God's sakes, my kids don't get hurt. Because when they get on that bus, I treat them like they were my own. Okay? Simple, because want to know why? I would want somebody to do that for my child. Okay? Number three, we stop at every railroad crossing. We put our hazards on, we roll down our window, we open our doors, okay? You don't have to stop. I have to stop. That's why I put my hazards on. You see what I'm saying? Hazards. And I listen and I look for the sound and sight of an oncoming train because you never beat the train, okay? Number, I can't even remember. Next point, yellow, not red. Big flashing lights up top, they're yellow. They're not red. So that means that you don't have to stop because they're not red. Let's discuss red, not yellow. When the flashing lights on the top of the vehicle are flashing back and forth, plus or minus the little stop sign that folds out, plus or minus, okay, you have to stop. The red lights are on because my car is, my truck is now in park. My door is open so I can either pick up or drop off one of my passengers, okay? So always remember that. I can keep my yellows on for forever. 
but when the red light goes on, you stop, okay? New York State law, 55 miles an hour for school buses. Get over it. I'm not gonna go above 55. It's not gonna happen. Swear oaths, curse at me, shake your fist at me. I'm not going over 55. You wanna know why? Because it's not safe. It's not safe for me, it's not safe for my monitor, and it's certainly not safe for my kids, who, once again, I treat as if they were my own. And finally, the last point. Do not ever pass a stop school bus with the red lights on. Plus or minus the little stop signs that fall out or the little guard thing that, fall, that folds out. Do not ever pass a stop school bus with the flashing red lights up top. Because let me tell you why. I got a little camera in there and I see you pass me. I'm going to reach up turn the camera on, and I'm going to get 20 seconds of your license plate. And then when I get back to the dispatch, when I get back to the yard, I'm going to hand your license plate number to my dispatcher, who will then call the sheriff's department. And hopefully, you'll get a big ticket. So listen, your life is not more important than mine. My life is not as important as my kids, okay? Don't mess around. Take the extra minute. Don't get pissed off at me because you got up late for work, okay? Or you got to be somewhere because it's not my fault. It's not my monitor's fault and it's not my kid's fault, okay? It's all about safety. This is what we do. This is why we keep our kids safe on school buses. So do me a favor. Do the right thing every time. Have a great day. And that was Rob on bus or school bus safety, folks. Um, who else we get out there? Who wants to take a seat in the, well, it's not really the hot seat today. It's more of a, uh, it's the Rob Love seat. <laughs> Who's going to Rob's story? Come on, I know you're out there, people. And we have Brett Dills. Hey. In. There he is. Hey. How you doing, Brett? Good, guys. Nice to talk to you guys. I've never really been a video person. So um, <laughs> forgive me. This is going to be a tough one, too. Um, wearing this hat today for him. I, I know. I was looking for mine. <laughs> I, and, you know, um, I'm a big Indianapolis Colts fan, so I hate New England. Hate New England. <laughs> so for me to wear this hat, and I had to dig it out because I like baseball, and I really don't have much against the Red Sox. It's the taint sure. of the Patriots that taint everybody else up there and i know you're from new england douglas so i just i had nothing uh, to do with it i, had I know to i know do with that. i know um you know i'm I not gonna say in arizona <laughs> yeah i know um uh um I'm probably not going to add anything any more eloquently than anyone else can do um i just want to say you know there's been a lot of bs that's gone on in the groups lately and the stuff we've done for rob and karen in august is beautiful and it's you know it it shows what's good about these people in here and um you know i'm taking a little hard um taylor alejandro cm taylor couch and i were going to get meet up with him um on may around may 27th in cincinnati he was coming to town for a wedding um you know it's an easy drive for indy you know taylor lives right across the river in northern kentucky and you know we didn't get that opportunity and i'm just really regretting it um I don't have any great, great stories about Rob, other than we, he, just what you guys have all said. He was just really friendly, always positive. Um, I was a little worried about him last um, Christmas time. You know, his wife was living in Texas at the time uh, to take a job. And, you know, she they'd gone through some job loss in their family. And I sympathize with that because I had some job loss a few years ago. I was out of work for about a half a year. Wow. And, um, you know, being separated from Karen, he, I could, and I, I've had some issues with, you know, mild depression in my life. And he had mentioned that in one of his videos and I could tell. And so I always, you know, and I was and when he told me Karen was coming home, I know she lost her job and that sucks. And I really felt for him for that. But um, I was glad at least they were going to be back together. Um, and um, and I'm, I'm just gutted that, you know, August is going to grow up without a dad. That just kills me to see because I'm a father. And I can't imagine it. So, um, you know, I'm going to probably get off here in a few minutes, um, go hang out with my wife and my daughter downstairs. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to 
you know, give big props to the group because what Peter has done, what Douglas has done, what Matt Walsh, what Nolan in UK has done, and um, Thomas Ayla, Ayla is a, that's how we pronounce his name. I don't know. Um, you know, have just really stepped up and showed what good people there are in this group. And, you know, I'm so proud of all you guys. So, uh, sorry, I'm getting a little choked up. It's it's a little no, tough. No, 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 you're choking and me up, uh, man. <laughs> I hadn't got, I hadn't got never... choked up until now. And I think it's, you know, it's hard because I never actually physically talked to him. I chatted with him all the time online with ims you know we split an order from the uk some goodies and i forwarded them on to him and i sent him some aftershaves that i could buy here in indianapolis that he couldn't buy locally in new york and he sent me some stuff and um i was really looking forward to that memorial day just to meet him i know taylor was too taylor's good people um and it, that just, you know, I would, I took, I would had vacation day scheduled just to go visit. And yeah. we've always talked, you know, about getting Cincinnati chili and things like that. So uh, we were just going to hang out for the day and, and ha- hook up with Taylor, hopefully. And um, I wish it could happen. It's, I'm sorry. And, you know, hopefully next time I can try to get together with some of y'all, uh, I'll make a better We can, it'll happen because I, you know, um, it's just, it's interesting being friends with people you don't, aren't face to face with very often and um you've developed these friendships and these um sorts of things so um uh, yeah i'm sorry i'm just gonna ramble and i don't want to ramble anymore oh, no 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 um, hey, if, if, if there's uh, ever an episode to do it man this is the time to do it you know yeah we're all the 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 passion the emotion uh, yeah, yeah no. like part of the and, process uh, man and I halfway, I want to ask David to stop by in and out for me because he looks like he's in a whole drive-through situation. Um, I could use a double double. <laughs> now I got my fix a few weeks ago when I was in Orange County. So, um, but I'll, I'll back out. I, I'm going to go hang out with my family. But I did want to get in and express, you know, my my gratitude to all you guys. Um, hopefully, you can see it. I got it right here. Uh, uh, wonderful stuff. Uh, I'm sure there's others that are going to do stuff for them and anything we can do because, you know, I, I hope my my hope would be someday August finds us, maybe joins us. Oh, he will. Because he um, I think we'd all get a big kick out of that. So um, I'm going to check out, guys. Um, I'll probably tune back in, in a little bit, um, but uh, I got pizza waiting. So, um, you know, cheers hey, to all you guys. Hey. Okay. Hey, Brian, before you go, just yeah. Brian, before you go, next time you're in the Orange County, man, hit me up and we'll get together. Yeah, I um, it was I I I have a hard time figuring out how far Orange County is from things, and I know you're more oh, in the LA area. Well. Yeah, no, um, I'm, actually, I'm I'm actually in the closest part of LA to Orange County. I'm in southeast. I'm I'm in southeast LA County. Yeah. So it's like literally. 10 minute drive and I'm in Orange County. All right, like, man. I'm just in Orange County right now. So anytime you have to around, brother, hit me okay. up. Okay. Well, go Lancers, man. So thank you. Yeah. Thanks well, a lot. Take care, everybody. Got I'll see you in the phone guys. or to meet up. Okay. We'll do. Yeah, man. You know, and, and that said, uh, there was something else I need to mention. Um, we're trying to put together this group for artisans. It's called Artisans for the Franks, and that's Franks with an E. So Artisans for the Franks, it's a Facebook page. And we're trying to get other artisans out there interested in or just uh, motivating them to maybe create some type of product uh, in honor of Rob and uh, for the fundraising cause that, you know, they can raise funds however they want with it for, and offer whatever percentage they want uh, to the family after the fact. So if there's any artisans watching right now, um, please check out the artisans for the Franks on Facebook, or you can just PM me for more, more information on that. But um, the plan is, to pretty much a, a different artist in a month uh, puts out a product, a limited edition product. And uh, then the funds go to the family. And, you know, someone asked me if we were, should be more than that long. And I don't really think it's mourning at all. I think it's more celebrating and it's also keeping the family in mind because this doesn't go away for them after this. So uh, that's just our intention. Uh, I'd like to really thank Jim Chavez for uh, really spearheading this. Uh, it was an idea I brought up in a forum and I, uh, he hopped on it and started approaching artisans. Uh, that said, uh, um, Ben Ule is the first one on the list uh, to be involved in this new project. And she just released her uh, soap bomb and I believe aftershave for Rob today. 50%, 50% of that, of what you pay goes to the Franks. 
So uh, check her out. Check out her site today. Uh, Ginger's Garden will be following, and there'll be other artisans as uh, time goes on. I'm going to do another re-release of uh, the Rob Frank soap for those of you who didn't get it, for those of you in the UK. I'm sorry, guys. I'll give everyone a warning 24 hours before it happens, but it, you know, it sold out in, uh, in under an hour. So uh, that says a lot. <laughs> um, okay, who else we got down there? It's, it's just one of, those situa- it's one of those situations uh, about the whole morning issue. Um, for those of us that know him from the groups, the morning period is going to be usually a bit shorter. But it doesn't mean you should ever really stop celebrating the life and keeping in mind that he did leave behind the family. And if we're able to, in any small way, help them along this process, I'll tell you, my family had a big loss with my father-in-law passing um, about a year and a half ago, almost two years now. And the pain doesn't stop for them. So just knowing that people are there and that people cared about uh, Rob, it's going to go a long way for them that, he, that they know he touched so many lives, even though it's not going to stop their pain. It's going to help them with a little bit of a smile, knowing, knowing, knowing what's going on. For sure. For sure. Okay. Who else has a Rob story? Who else has a Rob story they'd like to share with us? Hey, James. Welcome to the hey, show. Guys. Uh, so I just wanted got to share a quick Rob story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know how many of you are aware of it, but John Stanley has a, uh, oh man, i take that ear plug out. I had my phone in one ear and this in the <laughs> other, and I was hearing a delay and it was throwing me off. Um, in uh, John Stanley's group, the Turkish Bath, where we mostly focus on uh, like Turkish products like Derby or Arco, uh, right. Rob got a, uh, he tried to order two Derby creams. And he inadvertently ordered 20 or received 20 <laughs> tubes of Derby. And so he immediately went over to the Turkish bath group and said, hey, if you want to <laughs> lather with a with a Turkish product or like Arco, I believe it was, show us, you do a lather up and a shave or something like that with Arco, I will send you a tube of Derby cream. <laughs> Didn't ask for shipping didn't ask for anything and we tried to keep it uh so that he would have fewer trips to the post office because <laughs> he just sent out i don't know 15 tubes of derby to various different people Jeez. and he was i i interacted with him a bit uh and never got to speak to him never got to meet him just a geographical thing but uh just seeing him on the groups and experiencing personally his generosity, it's uh, it reminds me of how people say that the internet, uh, for a lot of people, their their fears that the internet is going to replace life, it's real life. But I think that the internet can supplement life and bring people together. It actually can. Yeah. And. I think most people, you and I and David and you know, people in the shaving community, I, I get to meet people at like Big Shave West and meetups that I interact with on the internet and you meet them and you feel like you've been friends forever yeah. because yeah. you've interacted online and it no, just, it enriches life. And uh, I'm just glad that the shaving community is coming together and supporting Rob and his family and, uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody. I mean, I'm, I don't want to get choked up <laughs> because like just thinking about like, uh, like if, if I, if I just suddenly passed away, you know, like what kind how that would leave my family. And, uh, so I just want to thank everybody, uh, for showing what a great community we have. And that's, Thanks, James. it's, I just wanted to share the story and, and that's it. Just another example of Rob, what a great guy he was and how generous he was personally. Did he, did he so. do a video around that whole, whole episode with the, the Derby? I believe so. Yeah, I believe he did. I vaguely remember. Yeah. I, okay. Cause I don't remember seeing this on the page, but I do remember something about that. Uh, yeah. It just, it cracks me up. Well, he was, <laughs> he was talking up the cream and I was like, okay, so it's, it's just the regular tube of Derby. I, it's in my bathroom, actually. I, I, it's one of the few creams I have in the bathroom. But it's, uh, 
it was just the Derby normal. You know how they have all the funny names like Arco and Derby have the yeah. funny names, yeah. especially Arco, but Derby, it's just Derby normal, white and blue too. <laughs> and he was talking it up, how great it was. And I was like, okay, come on, I'll try it. And then I tried it and it's a ridiculous performer. And I'm like, how it's so cheap. How did, you know, and that, that's how I differentiate between cheap and affordable. Something could be cheap, so but if it performs, it performs. Who cares if it's like a two or three dollar tube? If it performs, it performs, and the smell is good. And I, I doubted it, but I gave it a try because he talked it up so much, and then it ends up being one of my favorite, you know, affordable creams. So, thank well, I'm gonna, service. I'm gonna get out. What okay, were you saying? Well, thank you, James. I, well, I just want to get out so that? we have room for more people. Sure. Um, what I wanted to say was, is you know, to, is something to be said about a Turkish shave. Everyone knows about a Turkish shave. If you ever get to Turkey or find yourself a Turkish barber, you're in for a good shave, a killer shave, in fact. So the soap needs to perform. And uh, the soap makers over in uh, Turkey, they, they know what they're doing. They've been doing it for hundreds and hundreds of years. In fact, some of them, um, I mean, just some of the techniques they do, there's some that cure their soaps from, for seven to eight years in a cave <laughs> before they sell them. So, I mean... They get their soap right, and they just figured out how to make it cost-effective, I guess, for them. So, uh, well, seem to have lost David. So now it's, it's Doug flying solo. <laughs> Before we get into the next um, to the next story, yeah. is Derby cream really that good? I've never tried it. I've never tried any any Derby product. I actually even haven't tried the blades. Um, personally, oh. I've had my barbers use it on my head when they shave the sides of my head, but I've actually never used. It. So, how is that Derby cream? How, how, what's going on with that I stuff? I th uh, it's great. I I, uh, I bloom it in a cup. I put the the tube in a, a cup of hot water, and uh, I mean it's just it's very protective. It reminds me of a oh what is it? Yeah, it reminds me of a Burma shave, vintage Burma shave actually, um, which I'll show you right now. Not to go too far off track here, but the only thing that doesn't compare is the scent of Burma shave. But it's very similar in performance, and the closest thing I can find to this stuff. So, yeah, definitely check it out, David. And use my yeah, Merca Forty Five when you do. <laughs> okay, definitely. that said, we're still going strong here, Rob. Um, who do we got next? It's Zach Hood. Welcome to the show, Zach. Hey, guys. Hey, uh, real quick, just on the Turkish barber uh, comment. The one thing that I like on those videos is they're one of the few people, if you watch them, they, they sometimes finish with a, uh, <clears throat> before they apply the aftershave, they do a clay mask. So that's one thing I've always uh, yes. enjoyed. So, yeah. Um, yes. And they, and they burn. They, they burn the hairs, too. Have you seen that? With the wick on the, the ear. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Or like around the eyebrows and whatnot. Yeah, it's really it's a cool technique. They're David, you should learn that. <laughs> what you yeah, got? Uh, just real quick, you know, when I found out last weekend, um, can't remember the day, but for me, I didn't really know Rob. I've been out of the groups on Facebook, uh, you know, for the last seven months. So, um, <clears throat> I, I'm glad you guys gave me the link to his channel. I look forward to checking it out. Um, but I basically just wanted to hop on and just show my support for everybody that's felt affected and is mourning his loss. And uh, it's nice to have the uh, variety of guys come on and share their stories. So he definitely sounds like uh, an awesome guy. And I, I wish the best for his family. And um, maybe I can donate a, a piece. I can work with Douglas and we can do an auction on one of my pottery bowls to help out his family. That's uh that might be something. So um, I wish I had a story. He sounds like an awesome guy. So hopefully by the, watching his videos, I can get a little bit better idea of what he's like. But I just wish yeah. you guys all the best. Yeah, I, I'm sure it's hard. but <clears throat> so. Yeah, you definitely will get an idea for who he is um, on his videos. Um, yeah. Come on. They, Large than life. F, big uh, F and Rob Frank. Like. F and Rob Frank, for those of you guys that are, are not the PG-13 crowd, that's fucking Rob Frank right there. So that just kind of – that kind of says a lot right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Awesome, Zach. Well, thanks for popping in, and uh, I'd like to encourage other people out there who maybe have uh, 
to just seeing what's going on in the, in the community and whatnot. And maybe they haven't met Rob yet because Rob is still with us. We do have him on YouTube and uh, the next generation of shavers was too. So we got that going on at least. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, whoever wants to take a seat by all means. Thanks a lot guys. We'll see ya. Thank you, Zach, for joining us. We'll see you next next and time. Get back on the damn Facebook group, you bum. And we'll talk. We'll talk more about the the donation after the fact. Just PM me, and we'll, we can work something out for sure. I would. Okay, we'll do. Help you out there. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Zach. Okay, who do we have next to take a seat and tell us a Rob story? You know, all the stories start to sound the same after a while. <laughs> But I do remember something with that soap, with the, uh, ordering the wrong soap. Or wasn't, I don't know what it was, but misordering the soap. Who do we got here? Is that Sly? It certainly is. You ready for a, a Massachusetts accent? <laughs> there he is. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, we got you. Welcome, Sly. Where's your Red Sox hat? Yeah, that I don't have. <laughs> I was never a big sports <laughs> fan. Especially baseball. Right on. Look, right on. Yeah, what's up? Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what you got for us? Oh, man, it's been hard to accept. Uh, I used to talk to him a lot, not just about shaving. Actually, we didn't even talk much about shaving unless, you know, in the groups he would comment on my uh, Shave of the Day post. Uh, we used to talk a lot about music, and um, he liked a lot of punk rock, and he liked some metal. And he actually even liked uh, Portuguese folk music. I was surprised when he posted that one, so I was like, Oh, cool, Fado. And I'm like, don't expect that from a non Portuguese person. You know, I was like, how does he even know me? He was like, tell me how he was a big fan. Uh, we also talked about pomades, and I think that's how I got into it. Was well, certain brands of pomade was from him. So, um, yeah, he was always like a really cool guy and <laughs> had a good sense of humor too. So, it was the type of person I would get along with. You know, he had that that humor that you know he don't care what anyone else thinks <laughs> which you know it was good for me because i can get pretty controversial with my humor so you know i was glad he wasn't the type to get so easily offended yeah yeah no rob would never i don't think anything really offended rob but yeah speaking of offended fender i think i saw a picture of him playing the fender guitar uh he had a strat in one of those photos yesterday someone posted uh it had to be about 15 years old maybe 20 years ago but uh he was a Strat guy, it would seem. I think it was a Strat. I looked at it quick. So uh, I'm a I'm a Les Paul guy. So, you know, I, it's things I, I pay attention to. It's like Dodge. And I didn't even know you liked guitars. I thought you were just a drummer. <laughs> oh, no, no, man. I'm a jack of all trades. <laughs> <laughs> Master of few. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else that's a nice little change of pace right there. The, the fact that just the complexity of some of the people that we have here on the Facebook group. Um, I like Portuguese folk music. That just shows a very, um, again, just little, adds more to his individual personality that we all came to know. You know, we just, again, yeah, I was reminded about that. Um, mm-hmm. Yesterday, I was looking through some posts because I, I remember we spoke quite a bit and commented a lot on each other's posts. And then I saw that one popped up. He wanted to come to Boston in the spring. Oh, and right. He you mentioned sure. that Portuguese beer port- and food and, um, Fadu, which is what uh, Portuguese music is, uh, is called. And I was like, oh, damn, that sucks. He never did, you know, spring's not even here yet. So I yeah. guess we won't be hanging out, unfortunately. I mean, I'll, I'll definitely uh, have a time with um, some Portuguese food and beer and music for him uh, when spring comes <laughs> in his spirit. Yeah, libation. Um, the Madeira wine, especially um, at the Portuguese feast. You got to pour some for your, for your homie there. Um, <laughs> It's interesting though. I, I really didn't see this coming at all. And you know, that said, it, this, this is also a good a good chance to really um, talk about male health, guys. If you haven't had a physical in a long time, go out there and get one done. I mean, because this I don't know if this snuck up on Robert at all, but it snuck up on all of us, and I didn't see it coming at all. I mean, like, so it's it's like that. Yeah, none of us really knew anything was going on until it was really really I, bad. I'm assuming he kept it private. Because uh, yeah. he was supposed to get the New York meetup, and he couldn't make it. So right. he was in the hospital that day, I found out. And so I'm assuming there was something happening, but he probably didn't want to really tell anybody. I, just, I mean, he was making plans for month that, months ahead, though. It's like, I don't I don't know if he realized how serious this was or whatnot. So, yeah, well, all of you out there, up. we don't want anyone else disappearing on us here. Uh, we need all of you. So uh, get go, go for that physical if it's been a while. Who else we got? 
Oh, exactly. It was it was his kidneys. Zach, they were failing. It may it's probably uh, that, more complicated than that. I that could what... sneak up on you though. Uh, that happened to a buddy of mine who's no longer here. Um, he was doing relatively fine, and all of a sudden his kidneys failed. He was a young guy. He was only maybe a little bit younger than we are. So, yeah, but he was battling it for a while. Uh, well, it seemed like a while because his girlfriend was always talking about it on Facebook. So it just seemed longer where. We didn't really hear much from Rob talking about it. So, you know, it does seem like it snuck up on him, but I don't think it takes long when your kidneys fail. No, there's not much you can really do. Uh, I mean, unless you, you know, can crazy get treatment. Get a new one or you put, you put yeah, on the list. You're probably on a long waiting list go. on a kidney. Yeah, once they go, they, they're gone. Uh, oh, wait, we got, okay, so Brett says he was avoiding treatment for a while due to health insurance issues. There you go. Due to health insurance issues. And see, that, country that, in the world. That, that, I love health insurance. such a shame because you never know if he was able to get treatment earlier, maybe he'd still be with us. And it's just, it's, that's just, mm -hmm. it's just unacceptable. It sucks. It, it's a real shame. If that's the case, you know. Yeah, it is. It is. Okay, who else we got out there? Who else would like to take our fourth seat and share a Rob story with us? I think Zach likes the shape should come Zach, on. He's Zach. commenting a lot. <laughs> Zach was already on right before you. Oh, yeah. Never <laughs> mind. <laughs> I'm not good with names. Yeah, no, it's fine. Trying to think of another Rob story. Uh, oh, you know, they, okay, here's one for you. And uh, th for those of you who bought the soap or uh, participated in the fundraiser by buying the soap, you, you may have <coughs> an And uh, some of you may not have. You probably rushed to buy the soap because they usually sell it fast in this situation. But um, black tea is one of the notes in it. And um, it's really the base note. Um, the reason why I chose black tea is is because for the longest time with um, with Rob, I thought he, I thought he was British. <laughs> the way I mean, the UK guys embrace so heavily, so heavily. Like I just, and he would use mate all the time when it's like PM me, like yeah, yeah, go mate and stuff like you know. And this is before I guess I, before I watched his videos, I have no idea how I how this happened, but I thought the guy was British. And so we would joke around about that. And then somehow tea became a joke. Tea time. I got to go. It's tea time or something like that. You know, funny, ha ha uh, stuff. So that that's where I, I thought of <laughs> to include black tea would be, uh, you know. Ronnie's saying accent. I'm like, you can't hear accent through the DM. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Again, no, this is before I saw a video. It had to have been. Unless you're talking about my accent. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So I mean, he had he had uh, British qualities going on there, um, and he had family, I believe, over in, in Wales. Like you know, it's close enough to British, right? Uh, I got to be careful, but um, yeah. So for a while, I thought the guy was British. Oh, you know, bloke. He would use bloke and he would piss off a lot too. Over there, so I, I mean, like he was like. I thought he was something like Lithuanian or something. What? I don't know. Uh, well, he could be Lithuanian, but I think he had family over there somewhere. Piss off, mate, you bloke. Yeah, pretty much oh. that's it, Ronnie. I mean, that's how, that's how uh, he would talk half the time in, in, in texting, you know? So I just assumed he was British. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, <laughs> I just remember him telling me to give people hell all the time. Just give them hell. Give them hell. <laughs> Who cares? So, uh, yeah, he, one, of the best, one of the best life coaches I've ever had. And, you know, he's from the East Coast, too. Uh, he was born in Long Island. Uh, you know, I was born in Massachusetts, just right down the coast from him. So it's the same kind of attitude, same type of guys I grew up with. And uh, it was hometown uh, for me. And he was just really likable and someone I could really relate to on so many levels. And, uh, yeah, it was just great to have him there for us, for us, for all of us. And for me especially, I, I can't – I don't know how I could pay that back. Uh, and uh, he was just a special guy. So – that said, who else we got out there that wants to take a seat? Manchester. Okay. Manchester, that makes sense. Well, it doesn't necessarily make sense, but Manchester, okay, that's over there. That's Morrissey land. Oh, yeah, so that is England. Yeah. yeah. That's a, a burnt-out uh, 
Milltown, a lot like uh, New Beige, New Bedford, uh, Fall Riva. Very similar. And that's mm-hmm. in the. I'm trying to think of that. Love is out there. <laughs> yeah. Holy Shido. Hey, well, before we, we wrap up here, Douglas, um, any updates on any upcoming meetups? Upcoming meetups? Uh, I just went over this. I just closed the page on my. Uh, on my uh on our website but um i just went over this on we recorded the new uh cutting edge podcast last night so i, I ran down the list with that that should be out soon with a, a more extensive listing of uh meetups but you can also always go to shavemeetup.com and uh check that out uh for your well to find out more about what shave meetups happening near you it's also we provide a resource in the frequently asked questions section on how to throw your own uh meetup um so off the top of my head, there is the uh, Sabring uh, South Florida meetup happening this Saturday coming on the 25th. So, uh, in fact, that's that John Romanoff is going to try. Now, hopefully, Paul H. will be on the show next week on our 50th episode. Excuse me. But uh, John Romanoff will be uh, popping in from there. I think it's right after the meetup happens. But you know a few of the guys are going to still be kicking around. Uh, he's going to pop in and just give us a, a brief update. Hopefully not. Uh, it'll be it'll be cool with Paul H. I mean, Paul H. is it's this show. <laughs> we've been trying to make happen for a long time. Uh, so, yeah, that's what we got for meetups for the one the next meetup to happen. And that's next week. So we are running out of time, folks. If oh yeah, well there is <laughs> there is the Riverside meetup happening July thirtieth, folks. Um, that's following now, but we'll talk more about that on upcoming episodes. This this episode's really about Rob. So. You know, I, I, there's not really much more I can say, except there's a, there's like a void, there's like a hollowness I've been feeling all week, and um, you know, something is missing. You know, it, it's, something has been taken, and it's gonna be trying to fill that void. And I think one way to do that is just doing, being nice to each other, uh, doing good things for other people, and uh, helping us fundraise for for this and for other things that will you know that, that are gonna come up. So. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, why we need to get rid of our pettiness uh, at times because we might say something we, we get along with, you know, say, I, you know, say me and David, we say something stupid to each other and piss each other off. Then one of us is gone. And that's our last moment with each other would be pretty sad. So we need to get rid of this pettiness. In, uh, yeah. Well, groups. I mean, if you look at it like we're all a big family, you know, brothers and sisters fight all the time, but they're still family and they still work it out in the end of the day. So they still have to sleep under the same house. And I know it's never that easy, and I know there's some people that you're just not going to go along with, and they're not going to go along with you. But you don't have to be, you don't have to be dicks to each other. You know, life's too freaking shot. <laughs> like that accent. So, yeah, like, that's like even when you don't get along, it, it doesn't have to be a battle for everything. There's some people that they, they don't get along, and as opposed to avoiding contact, they want to continue to butt heads. They actually go out of their way to get in each other's way. And it's just, uh, and we shouldn't live that way. Yeah. Yeah. I don't try going outside the wet shaving community and tell them like, yeah, I just got in a fight with someone because he didn't like the razor I used or the cream I used. Yeah, they were like, yeah. guys are nuts. You know, well, it takes all kinds, but uh, hopefully we can, we can take this event for what it is and learn something from it. That life is mainly too short and we, don't, we can just need to treat each other better. And, uh, you know, with that said, uh, our hearts go out to the, the Frank family. We're, we're rooting for you guys. and we're trying to do what we can for you. If you're watching, uh, and uh, Rob, I know you're here with us right now. And uh, I salute. <laughs> and I think I may have lost connection. But no, we got uh, you. You're you're still there, Douglas. Okay, yeah. you're, you're good. This has been episode 49 um, of the Wet Shavers Roundtable. Please join us, same bat channel, same bat time next week. Do you guys have anything to add before we cut out? Now I've lost them. <laughs> um, no, no, no. We got. It, 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 no, it, it, no, I just couldn't think of something. Hard. I'll just say, take care and enjoy yourselves. Hey, make a difference okay, in somebody's folks. life today, man. Yeah, give a loved one a hug, and we'll see you next week on the Wet Shivers Roundtable, folks. And uh, thank you very, very much for joining us, and thank you for all the contributions and uh, aiding us and all the fundraising that we've we've done and we continue to do for the Frank family. So one more time to contribute to uh, the college fund for August, go to augustcollegefund.xyz and to donate to uh, 
Rob Frank family directly. Number four, Rob Frank with an E dot com for Rob Frank dot com and make your donation today. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you uh, next week. Be nice to each other. I hope everybody is well. I hope everybody's feeling well. I hope your families are safe um, and sound. And uh, just remember, life really is too short and you might as well smell good while you're living it. Have a great day, everybody. Bye bye.